this is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at seven pins that did not make my list of go to pins for the past year. But these are still pins that I use quite often and I'm very fond of. And so each time I passed one of these up as I was assembling my list of go to pins, I was kind of surprised that it was getting passed up. So I thought it would be nice to make a video of why each of these got passed up. So I'm going to do a writing sample of each and talk about what I like about them and why they got passed up for my list of go-to pins. Now the first pin on the list is the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. This was a grail pin for me for a long time. I like smaller pins and I like fine nibs and this is one of the smaller sailor pins that uh, when posted makes a very nice size pin. This has a 14 karat gold um, rhodium plated nib and so I'm gonna do a little writing sample. This is inked up with um, let's see dye mine Oxford blue It just puts down a very fine line. I enjoy writing with this pen, especially on very smooth paper. And the reason that is, I like this is Maramon paper in my Puo binder. This is very pleasant to write on with this pen. Um, I also enjoy writing on. Uh, Tomoe River and Rhodia paper. However, I find that when I write in my Leuch term, it tends to pick up paper fibers. Um, and with this pen, when it picks up just one little paper fiber, it will start writing just a fat, blobby line. So I tend, whenever I'm in the mood to use a sailor pen, I tend to reach for my 1911, which is the only substantial difference between the two is, you can see the proportions are the same. Um, the Pro Gear Slim has a flat top and the 1911 has a round top. And I reach for the 1911 because it has a medium nib that does not tend to pick up those paper fibers. But the Pro Gear Slim is still a, a great little pen. I enjoy using it. The next pen that I passed up in my list of go-to pens is the Pilot Prera with a fine nib. And it's got one of the great things about it is that Oh, that very satisfying uh, capping, the click to the capping mechanism. And this is one of those pens when I got it and wrote with it for the first time, I thought, I'll never buy another fountain pen. This is my favorite. It puts down one of the most consistent fine lines. Let me just zoom in here. This one's inked up with Diatramenta Sherlock Holmes. And this nib is just so smooth. When I contrast it with the Sailor, the Sailor has that characteristic Sailor feedback, pencil-like feedback. Um, oh, I was getting ready to, let me change that to a Pilot. Prera. This um, pilot nib, I can't write and talk at the same time, is just very smooth for a fine nib. I just, I enjoy using this pen for taking notes. Uh, brainstorming. I like to write in my Leuch term with this one. This 
has that very smooth round tipping doesn't tend to pick up paper fibers so um, this one works much better on the uh, Leutch term and on poor paper in general it tends to write very well and I've noticed that a lot of times instead of going with uh, this really smooth nib I found here lately that I do prefer more feedback when I'm writing so I, I tend to go with my Sailor Pro Color 500 which these two pens are just don't have a whole lot in common but for me right now I tend to prefer the Pro Color 500 over the Prera but my preferences change from day to day so in a few weeks it could be the total opposite but for now I prefer the Pro Color. Next on my list of pens that got passed up another many of these pens are former grail pens this was one of my first grail pens the pilot e95s it's just beautiful this was love at first sight when i saw this champagne and burgundy it's hard to tell it's evening here and i don't have any natural light coming in but that's a a burgundy barrel uh, this was the first gold nib pen that I ever owned and it's just it's beautiful. It's very elegant and Let's see I have this inked up with uh, What is it it's Graphon Faber-Castell um, uh, Stone gray All right this is also a fine nib very smooth and the, the Graf von Faber-Castell inks tend to run a little dry so they just work really well in this very smooth nib I debated when I got this between getting the fine and the extra fine and you see how this fine nib it's writing a little bit wetter than the or broader slightly broader slightly wetter than the fine nib on the Prera now one of the reasons there are two main reasons that I pass this up on my list of favorite pens um, one of the reasons is you notice my grip my thumb tends to jut down past my other two fingers and this inlaid nib if you touch this little seam between the nib and the section you will get ink on your fingers and nearly every time I use this pen I'm not paying attention and my thumb comes down here and I look down and I've just got ink all over my thumb um, another reason that this one gets passed up is it feels delicate it feels like a such a delicate pen I would never take this to school I shouldn't say I would never I have taken this to school and worn it on my lanyard and I just I just this pen is so beautiful I would just be upset if I took it to school and got it messed up um, so generally this is a pen if it leaves the house it's probably I take it to church to take notes um, so I use it a lot here around the house uh, so if a pen being too pretty and too delicate is a downside that's the case here and one more downside is that the uh, converter sits so deeply into the pen you can't tell how much ink you have in there so but this is still a very enjoyable pen to use very glamorous you know stylish pen I love it uh, the next pen on my list list is the Twisby Mini now not long ago um, this pen 
I discovered works very well with a drier ink that I have. I have this inked up with uh, Dimine Earl Grey. And when I discovered how smooth this is with the, this troublesome ink, I thought, oh, this is one of my favorite pens of all time. And this has always been one of my favorite pens. It's just a cool pen. It's the only um, oh, piston filler that I own. All my other pens are cartridge converter, which I'm a big fan of. But I've just always enjoyed this pen. But I have found recently that I prefer, instead of reaching for this pen, I tend to reach for my Custom 74. It writes just slightly wetter and it puts down a finer line. And these are, st you know, still two of my favorite pens. I just tend to reach for the Custom 74, which is another pen that works very well with uh, D Dimine Earl Grey. What I'm probably going to do is empty this Earl Grey out of here and ink it up with some one of my Eroshizukus. The 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 job that I've used this pen most for is grading papers and with this larger ink capacity it just works really well for that and I do enjoy wearing this clipped on my lanyard at work. I get lots of comments from the kids because this is not a pen that you see every day. Let's see, next on my list, this was another pen that I started out in the fountain pen hobby, not being very fond of the Lamy Studio. Now, I wasn't a fan of this clip. I thought it was weird. And eventually I came around and kind of thought, oh, I kind of like that. That's something different. I really enjoy this palladium finish. Uh, it's kind of a champagne color. It's similar to the color of the cap of the E95S. It's got a wonderful extra fine gold nib. And I really enjoy writing with this nib. I have this inked up with Lamy Blue Black, which is an ink that I have not been very fond of. It's one of the first Lamy inks that I ever purchased. Let's see, this is a Lamy Studio with an extra fine nib. Very wet. Now, when I use Lamy Blue Black in one of any of my steel nibs, I've got a a CP1 and a logo. I'm just not very fond of it. They tend to write a little drier, and um, but I tend to like this blue black in this pen. And this is the first time this inking up of it is the first time I've used this blue black in this pen. Now. I tend not to reach for this pen a lot. I think I'm just not fond, in general, of metal pens. The coldness of them, um, I find that instead of reaching for this pen, I tend to reach for one of my uh, plastic pens. I tend to prefer the feel of the plastic, the lightness of it, and it's just not as cold. But Oh, I do really like this Lamy Gold Nib. It's a, it's got some bounce to it, like the Custom Seventy Four. Another pen that I don't use as much 
as I thought I would, but I dreamed of getting the Faber-Castell Ambition for a long time. And when I saw this, it's a, I think it's called the Flamingo finish. It's got a guilloche pattern in the barrel. And it's difficult to show this color on camera, but it's a flamingo color. I knew that this was the one that I wanted. Now, normally I have this inked up with Pilot Eroshizuku Kompeki, which that Mediterranean blue of the Kompeki and this flamingo barrel, I think look really nice together. Now, this is the first time that I have inked it up with Hold on, let me write. This is an extra fine, which is another reason I really like this pen. This um, it's unusual for a European nib to have this fine for an for an extra fine to actually be this extra fine but I really like this I have this inked up with Graphon Faber-Castell deep sea green and it's hard to tell this is kind of a, a pale kind of sea green I guess and I don't use this ink very much because like the Dimine Earl Grey it's kind of dry and when I bought this, I bought it with my Caveco Skyline Sport, and I blamed it on the Skyline Sport. It tended to hard start and whatnot, but I didn't know at the time it had a lot to do with this really dry ink. So I don't use this pen as much as I thought I would because it does post but this is a heavy metal cap and it just makes it you know way back heavy and I do like to cap my pens but uh, I do prefer to use this one uncapped and but I I just love the look of this pen it's a nice nice looking pen. It's got this spring-loaded clip, nice engraving. Now it does, oh, it's a, gets fingerprinty bad. I'm constantly polishing the barrel. And what I tend to reach for instead of the ambition, if I'm wanting to use a, just a nice looking pen, I actually I will reach for this one, the Lamy Studio, or more often than not, um, the Sailor 1911. Let's see, last pen, uh, another longtime Grail pen that I dreamed about was the Caveco Lily Put. When I first got into fountain pens, I loved pocket pens and this is one that I dreamed of and it is the coolest of all my pocket pens. It's the tiniest and turns into full-size pen. Uh, now that I've discovered an ink that it works well with, I'm loving it even more. I have this inked up with um, Sailor Gentle Black. I've got an extra fine nib in here. And it's just a cool pocket pen. I still see uh, people talking about their everyday carry po or everyday carry fountain pens. And it tends to be guys, really like to carry these in their pockets. Um, this is the coolest of my pocket pens, but the one I actually enjoy using the most and is the most practical is its brother or cousin, 
the Caveco Skyline Sport. It, the Skyline Sport doesn't look as cool. It's chunky and kind of unusual looking, but the facets are great for it not rolling away. It's a little bit bigger so that when posted, it just has a, a broader section and feels a little bit more comfortable. It's just slightly more convenient, even though it's got a threaded cap, it pushes to post, so that makes it a little bit quicker to use. Uh, so I just find myself, when I want a pocket pen, I tend to go for the Caveco Sport. And the Sport tends not to disappear into your pocket. I've washed this one in the washer before and almost washed it several times and discovered it in my pants pocket before it actually made it to the washer. Uh, this one, I guess with it being just a little bit bigger, you notice it in your pocket and it doesn't end up going through the washing machine. But these are my not quite favorite pens, but still pens that I enjoy using a lot and they tend to get overlooked and when I discover someone else using, say, their new E95S, it reminds me, hey, I need to get that out and ink it up. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.